uh, era that our current uh, era uh, of climate change uh, 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 and, and the um, uh, likelihood of uh, climate extremes to happen. So that question actually can be divided into two sub questions. Um, sorry. How do ecosystems respond to, envi to environmental changes and how that response affect ecosystem function? Now ecosystem response in principle can take place or can involve processes occurring at uh, different levels of organization starting from the uh, organism level where phenotypic changes can take place. For example, plants uh, can uh, grow deep roots uh, when the top soil becomes dry. Then there, there can be response at the uh, community level, community structure changes. Uh, for example, a shift to stress tolerant species uh, when some environmental stress is applied. And there is a, also a response form at the level of, uh, at the population level uh, uh, by uh, intra-specific interactions, which lead to partial plant mortality and special self-organization to form patchy vegetation, as we see here, uh, uh, this patchy vegetation can sometimes be pretty regular, and uh, we'll see more questions of the more pictures of that kind uh, later on. Uh, now, it is very likely that uh, these response forms occurring at different uh, organization levels act in concert, and so we need to understand how they affect one another, and uh, in particular special self-organization is likely to affect community uh, structure leading to a uh, okay. reassembly because special self-organization involves not only distributions of biomass, but also redistribution of water, nutrients, soil biota, possibly toxic materials. And, and this uh, obviously affect uh, the distributions uh, of uh, species. And re, re, reassembly uh, uh, of communities may, in principle, also feed back on special self-organization. So these are the, the type of uh, questions that I want to, uh, to address here, the cross relationships between special self-organization and community reassembly in the context of dry land plant communities that that are subjected to increasingly drier climates. Now, patchy uh, vegetation, uh, which we see is a common site in uh, dry land landscapes and is uh, normally attributed to soil heterogeneities and, and topography, but it also appears in homogeneous system as pretty regular patterns uh, and here are just a, a few examples. Uh, we see here on the top right, uh, bended or stripes of acacia trees in Australia. On the top left, we have uh, so-called uh, furry circle patterns in Australia. These are gap, bare soil gaps in otherwise uniform grassland. Uh, the form hexagonal pattern in the sense that each gap is surrounded by six equidistant other gaps. We can have a, a labyrinth, type, labyrinth, labyrinthine type uh, patterns uh, of uh, grasslands or woody vegetation. They look very much the same, but the scale is uh, two orders of magnitude different. And there are more exotic patterns. Uh, uh, modern studies uh, indicate that the vegetation patterns of this kind emerge in a Turing-like instability of uniform vegetation. This is an instability of uh, a uniform state that leads to periodic pattern, and it's uh, normally dri driven by a positive feedback loop 
uh, which in the present context, it, uh, it is a feedback loop between local vegetation growth and water transport toward the growth location. The uh, downward arrow is pretty obvious if uh, locally uh, vegetation gets more water uh, from its surrounding, it will grow uh, further, furthermore. But why should a uh, local growth enhance the water transport towards the growth location? This depends on the mechanism of water transport. And let me focus on one mechanism, which is uh, overland water flow. Overland water flow um, uh, uh, is typical is uh, typical to uh, um, to landscape where the soil uh, infiltration into the soil is not high, um, and uh, in dry lands, bare soil tends to be covered by soil crust that reduces infiltration rate uh, into the soil of so of surface water into the soil. This cross can be physical, just uh, the impact of the rain that make the topsoil uh, denser. But quite often, it, this um, it made uh, of biogenic uh, uh, substances um, such as uh, cyanobacteria. Uh, cyanobacteria need sunlight for photosynthesis, so uh, it doesn't develop in vegetation patches where the litter blocks uh, sunlight. Uh, so this is one factor that contributes to differential infiltration, low in bare soil because of uh, this crust, and uh, high in vegetation patches because of the absence of this uh, crust. Another important factor is the roots that make uh, the soil more porous and also increase the infiltration rate. So again, uh, this increases the infiltration rate in vegetated area as compared with the bare soil area. This differential infiltration induces overland water flow towards vegetation patches. So, so if we imagine now uh, a uniform vegetation and by chance a patch with denser vegetation, according to this uh, positive feedback loop, that vegetation, that patch will draw water from its surrounding more than the, what the surrounding does uh, because uh, it has slightly higher infiltration rate. And, and then as it becomes, uh, as it draws more water, it grows yet denser, uh, increase further the infiltration rate increase the overland water flow towards it, and so on. So this is a, a, a scale-dependent feedback that amplifies non-uniform perturbations. Local growth is enhanced, while growth in the surrounding area is inhibited because, of, because uh, water is taken from, from the surrounding. Um, this is a, a vegetation model that captures this feedback loop. Uh, it consists of uh, three uh, state variables, the aerial density of above ground biomass, B, the soil water content, W, and the height of a thin layer of surface water, H. Uh, surface water increase because of precipitation, uh, they decrease by because of infiltration of surface, of surface water into the soil and they are transported, uh, 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 for example, because of uh, this uh, differential infiltration. Um, soil water increase because of infiltration of surface water. It decreases because of evaporation and water uptake by plant roots and uh, it diffuses, and uh, biomass is increasing with a, a water-dependent uh, growth rate. There is mortality term, and a term describing seed dispersal or clonal growth. Um, and when you study this model, uh, okay, and uh, the infiltration rate has, uh, is uh, 
should be biomass dependent to capture the differential infiltration that develops uh, when we have vegetation patients. So it's uh, low in bursol where the biomass is zero, but uh, high in vegetation patches. This is a bifurcation diagram, a diagram that shows stationary solutions of these uh, model equations in, uh, in one special dimension. The convention, so the horizontal uh, axis is the precipitation range. The vertical axis is some global measure of the biomass. It can be the special average of the biomass. Uh, here we use the L2 norm. Uh, and uh, the convention here is, is that uh, solid line represent stable solution, dash line, unstable solutions. So we have uh, the Bersol solution, the, the red uh, line, which is uh, corresponding to zero biomass. It's stable at low precipitation, but becomes unstable beyond the threshold value. At that threshold value, a uniform vegetation solution appears, which is stable only at high precipitation and, and loses stability as, uh, and loses stability as precipitation is uh, decreased below a second threshold, PT. Uh, may, uh, okay. Uh, it loses stability to periodic patterns. This is the blue solution branch that describes periodic patterns. And uh, uh, as we decrease precipitation, more and more solution branches appear. Here I show only two, uh, this one and an additional one with lower, uh, with uh, higher wavelengths. There's also a range, a bistability range uh, of uniform vegetation and periodic patterns, my stability range means that we have two alternative stable state. And in this range, we have many localized patterns, uh, which are domains of the pattern states in a background of the uniform vegetation state. And they can be of different sizes, which corresponds to the different solution branches here. Uh, Notice that uh, uh, this uh, that the periodic solution uh, extend to lower precipitation, uh, significantly lower than the uniform vegetation solution, and this is because uh, vegetation patches in periodic patterns benefit from additional water resource, not only the direct rainfall but also the water they draw from the surrounding bursal areas. Um, okay, once uh, patterns are formed, uh, um, if, if, um, if precipitation continues to, to, uh, to drop down, uh, further self-organization processes occur. Uh, uh, the first one is patch thinning. Uh, that is the fact that is the, uh, the, uh, uh, as this uh, diagram shows, the horizontal axis is precipitation and the, the vertical one is the space. So we have a periodic pattern, but the width of the patches decreases as precipitation decreases, but the wavelengths remain the same, or the wave number remains the same. This behavior occurs along any periodic solution branch. But there is also a, another process uh, of patch dilution uh, by transition to longer wavelengths, for, for example, from this pattern to this pattern. Um, these are 1D solutions, solutions in one space dimension, which can represent uh, in real system, bedded vegetation on the hill slopes. The slope actually uh, uh, dictates a preferred direction, uh, uh, bends or vegetation stripes orient perpendicular to the slope because then they can capture more water. And, and so we get basically a parallel stripe, which is a 1D 
one of these solutions. But in flat terrains, there, there are a third response form, which is uh, morphological transitions. And here is a uh, numerical simulation that has been done uh, by decreasing, where we, uh, we decrease the precipitation slowly in time, uh, starting from high precipitation where uniform vegetation is stable. And uh, as you see, uh, we hit a uh, Turing instability, that is a, a, a hexagonal periodic pattern, uh, periodic gap pattern. Uh, but then as precipitation uh, still uh, decreases, uh, there is a uh, plant mortality and the, the remaining patches now benefit uh, uh, from a larger basal area uh, by a, morpho a morphological transition to a strike pattern. And as precipitation further decreases, uh, the, the, uh, the vegetation patches in order to survive need to increase the bursal area and get this extra water that they can uh, draw from. And, and so this uh, stripes breaks into spots. So each spot now has, is surrounded by, is completely surrounded by bursal area and that water coming from the bursal uh, that surround it compensates for the decrease the uh, rainfall. Uh, so we have a sequence of morph morphological transitions from hexagonal gap pattern to stripe patterns to uh, hexagonal spot patterns. And all these patterns are seen in nature. Um, so uh, the common denominator of all this response form to decreasing precipitation once patterns form is that uh, they increase water availability to remain to remaining vegetation patches, and that increases ecosystem resilience to droughts. Precipitation drops down, but vegetation patch, patches benefit from this extra water resource coming from overland water flow uh, from the from the surrounding bare soil areas. Um, Okay, so now uh, does that uh, self-organization affect community assembly and biodiversity and how? So to address this question, we use a, a trait-based approach, uh, which uh, focus on groups of species that share similar values of selected functional traits rather than on the species uh, themselves. Uh, specifically, we focus on two functional traits, plant growth rate, which controls the capability to capture light and outcompete other species by growing taller, and mortality rate that controls the capability to, to tolerate water stress and uh, thereby outcompete other species. And uh, quite often there is a trade-off uh, between uh, functional traits, uh, actually, uh, with these two traits, uh, there's a, uh, and it's well known that there is a trade-off between these two traits. And uh, this trait can be parameterized by a quantity chi defined at the unit interval, so that uh, a chi equals zero corresponds to species that invest mostly in growth, and chi equal one corresponds to species investing mostly in tolerating uh, water stress. Uh, and the community is then described by a bar mass distribution in the composed physical space and trade space, a bar mass distribution that also uh, changes, can change in time. Uh, in practice, uh, we discretize the trade of uh, trade axis um, and to form n functional groups, chi i, with the biomasses uh, by bi, which is b at chi i. So uh, we can now extend the model to include biomass variables for all these functional groups. And uh, uh, so this is basically the same model. The difference lies in the uh, growth rate here, which now includes also uh, the biomass of other species and capture competition for light. It also includes 
mutations uh, term. Um, um, uh, well, it turns out that without, for this specific model, without this term, uh, one species outcompete, at, at, although it takes very long time, at that long time, uh, mutations become uh, uh, possible. And so we add that term. And then that solutions of that, uh, this equation often have a one hand hump uh, shape. Uh, and this is the distribution of biomass along the trade axis, the, the trade of chi. In the vertical axis, uh, we have the biomass uh, or the special average if uh, we have a pattern. And this type of uh, curves of, of distributions contain several, um, uh, several community level properties, including in particular uh, what we call community composition, which is the location of this pulse uh, along the chi axis, uh, quantified by chi max, the value of chi at a maximum, um, and the functional richness which is the width of this pulse. Um, and uh, there are other community level properties that we can extract from this, such as the total biomass, the total area here, under the curve or evenness and so on. But we focus on this. And uh, uh, by studying with this machinery, we can get interesting insights into the effect of special self-organization on community a, a structure. The first insight is that special self-organization acts, acts to reverse community structure changes. And this is illustrated by this cartoon. The green color co represents fast growing community and the blue color stress tolerant community. And as the drier climate develops, fast growing community uniform especially uniform fast growing community shifts to stress tolerant community. But the dry climate also can uh, lead us beyond the Turing instability to periodic patterns. And once they form, they shift the community back to fast growing uh, species. This is because of the additional source of water that we were talking uh, before coming from overland water flow from the surrounding basal areas. So uh, this, this cartoon is based on the following numerical computations, where in the left column, we see the biomass distribution in the composed trait uh, physical space. And in the right column, we see the biomass distribution uh, along the chi axis, uh, especially average over the physical space. So uh, what, what we see is that as aridity increases or precipitation drops down, uh, while, the, the uniform while the community is still uniform, it shifts to higher chi values, meaning to species investing more in tolerating stress. But once the uh, patterns uh, sets in, uh, it shifts back to uh, a, a fast growing species. And uh, the, the black line represents the unstable uniform community uh, that still keep, uh, follows the trend of moving to a stress tolerance species. So this is uh, one insight. The second insight is that special self-organization buffers the impact of further stress. And this is illustrated in this cartoon. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, top line is a 1D pattern. So we start with stripe patterns. And as uh, the climate becomes drier, we have patch thinning and then patch dilution. But uh, along this uh, um, route, uh, the community remains green. It doesn't change to stress tolerant uh, community, it remains fast growing uh, community. And this is because water availability 
remains almost uh, the same despite the drop in precipitation. And in 2D patterns, the, uh, we see the same behavior, except that the self-organization involves a morphological transitions from gap pattern to stride pattern to spot pattern. Again, this, this cartoon is based on the following numerical computation. Uh, here on the vertical axis, we have chi max, the, the composition, uh, and precipitation in the, in the horizontal axis. The upper solution branches represent the uniform uh, community. And as we discussed already, as precipitation drops uniform, it moves to high to higher chi values, meaning to stress tolerant species. But once patterns form uh, by the Turing uh, instability, then uh, uh, the community composition remains almost the same. The curve is almost horizontal. Um, uh, um, what we see here is, uh, for example, this point corresponds to this periodic pattern, and this point at lower precipitation is the same, the same solution branch, the same wavelengths, but with thinner patches. These thinner patches receive uh, now water also from the larger surrounding basal area, which compensate for the reduction in uh, precipitation. And at yet lower precipitation, at a uh, patch dilution occurs, transition to lower, to a pet periodic pattern with longer wavelengths. Um, so uh, this is uh, a, a kind of a homeostasis uh, effect, similar to, to our uh, uh, body temperature, which remains fixed despite the external uh, uh, temperature outside our body. Uh, of course, within uh, given uh, 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 limits. So this is the uh, second insight. And the third, okay, and notice that uh, there is a bi-stability range here of uniform, uniform community and periodic community. Within this uh, bi-stability range, uh, we can have localized patterns as we saw in the single uh, species model. And this bi-stability range offers uh, new ideas or, or directions for ecosystem management. Uh, they allow for hybrid states, which consist of pattern community domains uh, of various sizes in otherwise uniform community. Um, and uh, these hybrid states, first, they increase the biodiversity as now they consist of species uh, investing, both investing in growth, this is in the pattern domain, and species investing in, uh, in, in tolerance to water stress, this is in the uniform. So the combined uh, diversity or, or richness is this one plus this one is uh, larger than of any single uh, local uh, 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 richness. Um, and also, uh, this hybrid says a lot to control the evenness of the distribution because we can have uh, domains of different sizes, uh, and this leads to uh, to uh, different distributions. Um, this is uh, a, a, the same type of a, a picture for another set a parameter set that we recently found with a quite distinct uh, or with strong self-organized niche differenti differentiation, as we may call it, uh, which leads to even higher biodiversity. Uh, now, um, the implications, then this uh, uh, localized pattern also have implications to management. For example, for feeding livestock by non-uniform grazing. We can uh, uh, manage grazing non-uniformly to form pattern domains and uh, thereby uh, first increase the resilience uh, of the system to draws because patterns have higher resilience as we, as we show. 
and uh, but also uh, actually increase uh, the uh, functional diversity uh, or uh, of biodiversity, uh, and at least uh, uh, even if this uh, um, the biodiversity of in local biodiversity uh, goes down, uh, the combined one may remain uh, still high. So uh, with this, I want to conclude. Um, special self-organization can reverse community shifts, can lead to homeostatic community structure, uh, and it basically integrates the need for ecosystem services such as living livestock, feeding livestock, with the need to preserve community structure. Um, I focused it, uh, on basically on the green arrow, er, arrow, namely how special self-organization affects community reassembly, but we also can expect community reassembly to feed back on uh, special self-organization. And uh, for example, by changing existing stability ranges of periodic patterns, this is still under study. Another uh, direction to study is uh, special self-organization uh, that is coupled to phenotypic changes at the organism level. So far, as far as I know, it is unexplored. And, um, and with this, I want to uh, conclude, uh, acknowledge my collaborators in these studies. Bidesh Bera is a postdoc in my group. Omar Tsuk, a former PhD student, and Jamie, Jamie Bennett, a former postdoc who just lived in New York. And here is uh, some further reading uh, on this topic and, uh, and vegetation patterns in general. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. And uh, then uh, any of you, uh, if you want to ask something, uh, Please raise, raise your hand. And uh, Andre, uh, uh, did you raise your hand? No, I just applauded the lecture. Yeah, applaud. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Nadav? Um, yes. So thank you very much, Ehud, for this great talk. Um, uh, something that I just didn't understand regarding the model that allows for uh, mutations, um, I guess that there is some um, trade-off between resilience and uh, growth rate. Between resilience and growth? Um, I mean, you, you do not allow for mutations that have both better, uh, growth, higher growth rate and better resilience to drought. The, the trade offs between uh, uh, growth and tolerance, tolerance, oh, tolerance. Towards, okay. the, towards the stress. So th there is a trade off. Now, yeah. uh, and, and how, how the. Um, so, so when you. In, in your equations, you have a diffusion term in the B. So it dif the, the, the mutation, yes, the, the last term in, to the right in the first equation. It's a mutation to other types. So you, you decide from the very beginning what are the what are the species, and you have a mutation among these species, right? Right. It's a described mutations to species that belongs to nearby functional groups. Um, yes, but but the space of possible species is is uh, given. Well, the uh, we are not talking about uh, we are talking about the space of functional groups. Okay, this fine. Is, yes. Yeah, not species themselves. Ah, okay. And and that, so, in your simul just technically in your simulation, um, how do you know that what you get is a stable state and not a long and longer standing transient? Okay, so uh, this I mentioned briefly. Uh, when we set decay to zero, so we don't yeah. have the mutation terms, mm -hmm. we do see that that peak uh, gets narrows down 
and eventually one functional group outcompete all other functional groups. But that process takes very long. As the functional groups become very similar, it takes uh, extremely long uh, on time scale where mutations should be taken into account. And when you take into account mutation, even at very uh, uh, small rate, low rate, um, it stabilizes uh, uh, the distribution on a steady uh, uh, Hampshire distribution. Oh, uh, so um, th these are these are numerical uh, uh, observations, but but there are simple uh, simple observation because uh, once you see, you include the, this mutation term, uh, the convergence to this Hampshire uh, distribution is much faster. Yes, but if there is, uh, if there are alternative steady states, then the uh, time well, uh, may be infinite, uh, effectively. Well, right? uh, alternative stable community states, if there exist, uh, that will be very interesting. Uh, so far, we have not observed them. Um, uh, do you mean alternative? Well, um, what I mean by alternative community state is having another peak like yeah. that in some different, around some different chi values. This we haven't observed in this model uh, so far, but we do observe it when we take, when special self-organization take place, because then we have niche differentiation and we have different communities in pattern domains than in uniform domains. I see. I see. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question? Uh, then I. Uh, I, I will ask something. Uh, can you uh, go to the bimodal, the least differ differentiation page? We, we go to which? Uh, uh, the, uh, 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 with the least differentiation. I, I don't, I don't the least you. differentiation. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, on this one. Okay. This one? Uh, yes, and we have uh, 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 in the uh, uh, second row we have uh, have this uh, two peaked. Okay, here, here is the two peaked uh, distribution. I assume if you decrease the uh, mutation rates, uh, these two peaks uh, remain stable but became narrow. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and uh, then. Uh, 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 then and it uh, will be a clearer uh, uh, distinction. No, what uh, uh, as I don't understand uh, is the dependence of the x, the uh, spatial coordinate. Why uh, uh, one kind of pattern here in the intermediate x and x and the another one at uh, uh, at another x? It is just random. Well, the, you're referring to this different... Uh, different uh, location. X yeah. is the location. Well, this has to do... Uh, this has to do with uh, this uh, solution branches. Yes. Well, when, whenever you have uh, bi-stability bi yes. of uniform states, and a periodic pattern states. Yes. Um, there is a possibility of having many more hybrid states, which are fixed domains of one state in the background of the other state. Okay. These are these are strictly stationary stable solutions. They are not uh, kind of domains that. Uh, uh, expand or shrink in time. Okay. Uh, uh, it has to do with the, with the fact that the uh, boundary or front that connects the uniform state and the periodic pattern state is pinned in a range of the relevant parameter precipitation okay. in this case. This is a, a mathematical behavior that is referred to as 
homoclinic snaking because okay. of the snaking nature of the solution branches. It's okay. a topic of my, uh, that is, that is, uh, 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 has been studied a lot recently in the math community. And, but what you find, <coughs> this is for a single species or single functional group. But what we find is that we have also solutions of that kind uh, as community solutions for the whole uh, community, the model that includes the N uh, functional groups where N is a large number. Uh, uh, except that what we find is that uh, with the uh, uh, community solutions, this by stability range extend, extend in size. So it's actually make, making this uh, type of solutions more relevant. Okay, thank you. And Rafael? Okay, thanks, Giza. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so uh, I just have basic questions about the model. So one is the way you model um, the movement or dispersal of vegetation, right? So is diffusion. So it, to me, it's just hard to imagine uh, maybe there's a way to imagine this, but diffusion, in my understanding, is you have a concentration in a certain area that as time goes on, that concentration decreases because basically the particles are moving away. In the case of plants, the way plants don't move, right? They just disperse by producing seeds that grow elsewhere. But that movement of vegetation from the focal spot to the vicinity doesn't necessarily imply reduction in the density at the focal spot, right? So I suppose that's a little bit of an unrealistic aspect of using the feud in the model uh, plant dispersal. I was just wondering um, what kind of impacts that could have, or if you even agree that, that uh, what I just said it, it is true. Uh, and the other question I had was in the, um, early in the talk, you mentioned that you, the reason we have the formation of these spatial patterns is the positive feedback between biomass and water content. We're looking at the equations of the model, I'm looking for that term that um, encodes this, this uh, aspect, right? Where the, the, the plant biomass would actually increase water levels locally. And I just don't, don't, I can't find that term. And I was wondering if you could point to me uh, how that works in, in the model. Okay, so uh, first, uh, to the first questions, you're absolutely right. Biomass does not diffuse. Actually, this kind of term uh, comes from from a, from a dispersal kernel. Uh, imagine a term uh, that involves an integral over a kernel function times uh, times v. Uh, where the kernel function represent the range of the dispersal it can be short range or high range dispersal. Now, when you assume when when the dispersal kernel is uh, pretty narrow, uh, and, and then you can basically expand the biomass in the integral in the integrand in Taylor series around the center of, of that distribution of that kernel. And then um, uh, in Taylor series, then the, uh, uh, there's a zero solar term, there's a, which leads uh, provide the constant. There, there is a, a first order term, which cancel out if the distribution is even. And then there's the second term, that, which is a diffusion term. So uh, this is basically the motivation uh, to write the model in this way. And uh, you can, and we have done it, and other people have done it, uh, similar the model with the, with the kernel function. And uh, you get basically the same, same behavior. I mean, there, uh, there's no qualitative changes uh, in the, in the, in the onset of patterns and type of patterns that exist. So this is uh, the first question. The second question uh, is related to, if I understood correctly, how that model captures this positive feedback loop, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, uh, 
the, the crucial the crucial point is uh, this uh, um, uh, water infiltration rate I, which is biomass dependent, low in bare soil and high in vegetated soil. So the infiltration rate in the vegetated areas is higher. Uh -huh. This uh, produces a gradient in H and, uh, and uh, a flow towards a low level of H that is towards vegetation patches. This uh, is uh, uh, overland water flow is described by this term. This term is uh, in general a nonlinear diffusion term where this exponent alpha uh, is at least uh, one, um, uh, actually with the value, alpha with value one can be derived uh, or higher values actually, can be derived from shallow water theory. Uh, but even if you choose alpha equal to zero, uh, in which case you have a strictly diff a linear diffusion, again, the qualitative behavior remain the same. It does when you have a linear diffusion, you know, diffusion term leads to infinite tails, which is uh, not that physical. The, uh, you have a front, if you have a flood, uh, you have a, a front of that uh, flood, a sharp front, and this is captured by alpha non-zero. But uh, even if you choose alpha equals zero, uh, from, from the point of view of vegetation patterns and the community dynamics that we discussed, the results are the, are the same uh, qualitatively. Okay, so, uh, uh, so, uh, so if there is a vegetation patch uh, with, which is um, denser than the, its surrounding by chance, okay, you start with uniform vegetation. Locally, some area has higher denser vegetation, slightly by chance. Then the infiltration rate there is slightly higher. That induces overland water flow to that patch, which helps it grow uh, a yet denser because the growth rate depends on water, okay, on the soil water. Uh, if it grows denser, then the uh, infiltration rate goes uh, still uh, higher, which uh, still which uh, induces higher uh, differential infiltration and higher rates of overland water flow, and this is this is the positive feedback loop. And it's it's a positive feedback loop that amplifies non-uniform perturbations because the flow of water toward the vegetation patches have the, their growth, but at the same time inhibits the growth in the surrounding because water is taken from the surrounding. Yeah, so basically the, the short answer is the infiltration yeah. rate it depends on the bi plant biomass positively. Yeah. And I, I guess I didn't notice that. And also not, not only that, but on top of that, the evaporation constant also decreases as biomass increases. I just noticed that too. Well, well so again, well, what is- The evaporation constant, uh, the L the, there? Yeah. Right, I mean- You're making it this, also a function of biomass as a decline. Yes, yeah, so this, this uh, represents shading effect. Yeah. The fact that uh, shading reduces infiltration. But this, this uh, 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 does not affect the, the onset of the-, the does it, This by itself uh, is a positive feedback in a sense, because mm -hmm. uh, as the plant grows, evaporation reduces, and water availability is higher, so it can grow uh, further. But this doesn't lead to, to pattern formation or the Turing instability because uh, uh, the higher uh, water availability does not, it does not involve water transport. It doesn't come at the expense of water availability elsewhere. So, so this, this uh, by itself without the, mm -hmm. this uh, infiltration, uh, uh, differential infiltration, this will not produce patterns. It will produce bi-stability of bare soil and vegetation 
uh, states because uh, if, there, if there is a burst soil, there is high evaporation, which stabilizes. But if there is vegetation, evaporation is low and it can also uh, survive. Okay, thank you. Okay, and uh, we have questions in the chat. Uh, so uh, uh, so I, I read, that, read it. It is from Mikael Brush. And uh, thanks for the talk. Sorry to ask question in chat because I have some background noise. I was wondering how sensitive the width of the biostability region is to different parameter choices in the trade-off uh, case you discussed. With different parameters, can you end up with a smooth transition from one regime to the other without overlap? Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure I understood. Uh, I, I heard you <laughs> correctly. Okay, but, but uh, you can uh, read it in the chat. Yeah, so let me... Mm. Well, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I see. In, yeah. uh, in the uh, bottom on your screen, uh, there is a chat. If yeah, you... so this is a question by... By Mika Brosh. Brosh, okay. So it was, uh, but I was wondering... Um... Okay, so the answer is uh, is positive. Uh, you can have um, a, what we call a supercritical bifurcation, bifurcation that do not involve a, a biostability of states or hysteresis. Um, uh, one factor uh, that uh, controls that is the parameter R here. Uh, and another factor is uh, actually it doesn't exist in this model, uh, but in other, the root to shoot ratio, uh, which doesn't exist in that model. So the parameter R uh, 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 controls that. But typically, uh, these biostability ranges do exist. Uh, um, Yeah, I hope I answered this question. Okay, and uh, we have a second question in the chat uh, 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 from Vivek Babu. Uh, Prof. Ehud, thanks again for this insightful research. I have a question. The study, study region where I am located in India belongs to semi-arid systems. My question is, it looks possible to apply this fast growth phase to stress tolerant phase transition to understand the spatial organization of rural habitations. In Holocene, I suppose that the rural habitations evolved by trying to disperse population to settle in locations with large bazaar area for harvesting rainwater and increased resilience of human habitations. Do you think your models could be used to understand the spatial organization of human habitations, especially the rural system in semi-arid systems? Well, <clears throat> uh, this is uh, this is uh, this is possible. Uh, actually, long ago, we did uh, uh, build a model for. Uh, 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 urban segregation of different uh, 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 ethnographic uh, communities. Um, the major question that uh, one needs to ask is whether you can identify uh, a positive feedback loop uh, of the form that, uh, that I uh, drew here. Uh, uh, in a, basically, in order to um, to decide whether perturbations that you make um, will grow, you need a mechanism that amplify them. That is, you perturb the state, and now that perturbation should induce processes that act to further increase 
the perturbation. And this is what these positive feedback loops uh, do. And if you can come up with a positive feedback loop of that kind, then uh, yes, in principle, one can build up a model that will describe this uh, 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 rural habitation and, in principle. But uh, I, I need to think more about that problem to, to see whether this is possible. And, and uh, yeah. Yeah, is it correct if I if I'm thinking analogically uh, that uh, uh, urban systems as the growth phase model and uh, rural systems transition to rural systems as the stress tolerant phase. So I, I keep thinking about this from the understanding about Indus Valley civilization. Why population from Indus Valley civilization? at transition to the uh, rural settlements, abandoning completely the urbanization. So in that angle, I'm thinking about this. So is it correct to think urbanization as the process of growth phase? And then after attaining the threshold, it transitions to the stress tolerant phase, uh, rural, ruralization. Thank you very much. Yeah, again, I uh, what you're saying is, uh, Makes sense, uh, um, but one I, I personally need to think more about that uh, uh, 